Good evening and welcome to Chicago Tonight. I'm Paris Schutz. On the show tonight, Chicago Public Schools says goodbye to Columbus Day. The rollout of new touchscreen voting machines as early voting begins. United Pilots feel the impact of the coronavirus. And an art gallery finds a new home where you might not expect it. But first tonight, the latest on coronavirus. Health officials can confirm a fourth case in Illinois. It comes as Cranes reports a major housewares convention is canceling its McCormick Place show for later this month, citing coronavirus fears. Chicago Tonight's Amanda Vinicky is here with the latest. Amanda, what do you know? So, Paris, about this fourth case, it is a woman in her 70s. She's married to a man who is also in his 70s, who this weekend marked Illinois' third case of the novel coronavirus. Both are in isolation. The wife's at home, the man at Northwest Community Hospital in Arlington Heights. Beyond that, officials are saying little like if they know how the couple may have contracted the virus where or if the couple had traveled now that's personal protected information for that particular patient this is uh, new and it's evolving we just uh, found out about these cases over the weekend so we are in the process of investigating that when we know more we'll be able to share Several dozen federal, state, and local officials are working from a command center at the hospital. The director of the hospital's emergency department says it's following CDC guidelines. All staff that have been identified as having had any contact with this patient have been notified and are undergoing testing and monitoring. The next step protocols for each person's situation have been identified. In fact, the state health department is monitoring 286 individuals. That number changes every day as people get 14 days away from their exposure or 14 days away from the, the area that we are uh, uh, isolating them from, then uh, people fall off and then people potentially add on. And what does all this mean for the general public? Well, state officials say that they take the risk of this very seriously, and yet the risk for the general public remains low. I want to emphasize that this virus isn't specific to any one ethnicity, nationality, or population. Goes Chinatown, as we've reported, has seen a downslide in business since the outbreak in China. The governor visited the neighborhood today and encouraged others to do the same. Now, the state is taking steps to keep COVID-19 contained using what Public Health Department Director Ezekiel calls a sentinel strategy. This is an aggressive strategy to go out and be looking to see if there's community transmission or not. This method calls for testing people for coronavirus if they have flu-like symptoms, but if they test negative for the flu or other common respiratory illnesses. They have to voluntarily agree to that coronavirus test. Now, exactly which hospitals will conduct those tests, the state isn't yet saying because there's concern the public may try to specifically visit those institutions. Meanwhile, the state issued a bulletin to insurance companies outlining their obligations in relation to coronavirus. Governor Pritzker says Illinois is also developing guidelines for nursing homes. Now, as Illinois deals with these two new cases, an update on the first set from January also, that was a husband and wife. The governor says they have recovered. Good for them, and did a lot of ripple effects here with this disease, even though the risk remains low. Yeah, especially with that cancellation of the convention, big money loss in tourism dollars for the city. All right, Amanda, thank you very much. And we'll have more on the coronavirus and its impact on local businesses later in the program. And now to Carol Marine and the controversy over Columbus Day. Carol. Paris, thank you. Backlash from Italian-American groups after the Chicago Board of Education votes to declare Columbus Day as Indigenous Peoples Day instead in Chicago public schools. Mayor Lori Lightfoot, meanwhile, says she has no plans to eliminate Columbus Day citywide. So where does the fight go now, and does Columbus Day have a future. Joining us to discuss what's next are Janie Pochelle. She is with the Shy Nations Youth Council, who wants City Council, like CPS, to formally replace Columbus Day with Indigenous Peoples Day. And 38th Ward Alderman Nick Spazzato, an Italian American who is unalterably opposed to such a change. Welcome to both of you. Thank you, Carol. On Chicago yeah. tonight. Ms. Pochelle, let me start with you. Though CPS has made this change, Though there's an ordinance proposed in City Council, there is not much prospect, is there, that City Council is going to do the same thing the school board did? Um, I believe that we have a lot of 
backers in city council. We already have 13 aldermen that have signed on initially, and we see a lot more people in Chicago joining into this um, this change. Uh, but, but we don't see that that kind of energy from Lori Lightfoot. She hasn't done anything for indigenous peoples that I know of yet. Well, she says, I mean, the school board is her school board appointed by her. So those are her people to some degree, though she doesn't uh, right now support any change in Columbus Day. Alderman Spazzato, is there no merit to what CPS has done here? Well, the way they went about it, Carol, this is my whole problem with it. This was supposed to happen in January, and I got wind of it, and I talked to the board president, and he was kind of digging in on it, and then I made a few phone calls, and this was squashed. And as you know, there was nothing on the agenda about this. Uh, somebody just brought it up, somebody who talks about transparency and everything, and just brings it up out of the blue, and there was a vote, and then they voted out of, uh, out of CPS. Do we want to name that person who talks about transparency? Uh, I think it was Elizabeth Todd Breland. Okay. So it, it's, it's public record. You could look at the video. I could show it to you before I leave, but yeah, she's the one who brought it up, and that was not on the agenda, and just brought it up, and I, I kind of got caught by surprise, as did the rest of Italian Americans that were uh, somewhat negotiated or, you know, stopped this. So, and listen, I'm not against Indigenous People Day at all, so don't get that wrong. There is an Indigenous People Day already. There's the last Monday in September, uh, declared by uh, Governor Rauner. There's a National Indigenous People Day. I believe it's August 9th, so uh, there are two Indigenous Peoples Day already, so. So, so Ms. Pochelle, if there's an Indigenous Peoples Day or two, is that enough of a compromise to allow Columbus Day to still be a citywide holiday? Um, I don't think, I think the main agenda for Native people was to abolish Columbus Day. And this has been something that has been going on since the Columbian Exposi Exposition in Chicago. It's not a new controversy. Yes. Simon Pokagan was outside of the Columbian Exposition. Um, the, just the idea that Columbus discovered human beings is centered around a white supremacy fairy tale. So it's, people were already here. So if we're going to celebrate the founding of America, then that would be indigenous peoples. Has there been any meeting between your groups and Italian American organizations uh, that I, either I, of you know about? I can't speak for Italian American or organizations. I don't know if she, if she would know better than me, but um, to the best of my knowledge, few, no. And we've reached out to a few. Um, actually, Daniel Espada on the city council is Italian American. He was one of the people that backed this ordinance. Um, but we haven't got a lot of return with our outreach. Is there any compromise here? Um, not as far as I'm concerned, no. I mean, because there already is an Indigenous People Day. Um, so uh, we have our Columbus Day. I don't think anybody else will be happy if we, it took away any other days. So, um, so Italian American, because they have their day, Indigenous people get to have two days. So we're only asking for one day. So One of the things, Alderman, you were quoted as saying is that this is war with the city schools. Are you at war with the city schools? Well, I, 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 the CPS, uh, the leadership, absolutely. I mean, for the way they went about this and my conversations with them about this, and I thought this was stopped and this wasn't gonna happen, and the way they ambushed the mayor about this, the mayor obviously knew nothing about this and she's not happy about this. So yeah, I, I, you know, war is, might have been a strong reaction because I got caught you know, a little off guard. I was very emotional at the time, so it's a different kind of war. I'm not gonna go out there with pitchforks and torches and, and beat people up or anything like that, but we'll try to go through the process. Today, uh, this morning, we contacted ISBE to see uh, Illinois State Board of Education to see where we can go from there with that. I think it was an illegal act uh, not being on the agenda of everything, so or a wrongful act, I should say, so we'll see where it goes from there. Ms. Pushell, where does it go from here in terms of is this fight going to be waged in legislatures or in courtrooms or neither? I think the people are the ones who really pushed this. We had over, almost 6,000 signatures from CPS parents, teachers, and supporters of this. And we've been um, bringing this to the school board for over a year now. And I, I don't, I didn't see it as a surprise because last month it was, you know, like as it was going on, we knew that this vote was going to happen that day. Where are the numbers in Chicago, indigenous people, Italian-American people? I mean, do we have percentages here? I can't tell you how many Italian-Americans Ameri Italian are in Chicago. As I could tell you, there's more Italian-Americans died in World War II than any other nationality. 
But as far as in Chicago, we just know there's a lot. There's, or there, our culture is there all over the place, our food. Um, so um, we're most notably known for our food. And you know, we're not the most, uh, we're not treated the most fairly, okay? We've been discriminated against for a long time. Look at how we're uh, depicted on TV all the time and everything. So um, we had a little conversation earlier about uh, the old uh, Galewood neighborhood and everything. So, um, you know, I'm not too happy about the way Italian Americans are treated and depicted. So, Ms. Pochelle, what about the way indigenous people are depicted? Um, I think just from the idea that Columbus discovered human beings from uh, the doctrine of discovery, indigenous peoples have been viewed as less than people for a very long time, and it's actually the fabric of America. And if we're talking about how people are viewed on TV, I mean, we still have the Chicago Blackhawks, you know, as a racist, um, headless Indian in Chicago in 2020. So just the levels of, I mean, there are no levels of racism, but if we're gonna talk about discrimination, um, you really can't speak about that if you're talking to a Native American person. Any talks planned from either organizations uh, across the Jamie table? Jamie and me will exchange numbers after this, I'm sure. She seems like a lovely gal, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll sit down and talk maybe outside of the show. Alderman Nicholas Bizzato, Janie Pochel, thank you both for being on Chicago Thank you, tonight. Carol. We appreciate it. Up next, Paris and the rollout of a new touchscreen voting machine as early voting begins. Chicago Tonight is made possible in part by the City Club of Chicago. Smart people may disagree about what makes a great city, but part of what makes Chicago great is that we don't have to agree. To run a city like ours, a lot of issues come up. The City Club of Chicago is a place to debate those issues and hear from the men and women who shape the policies, lead the industries, and tell the stories that define our city. For the free and open exchange of ideas, the City Club of Chicago. And here's some more of what's making news in Chicago tonight. The first African American to serve on the Illinois Supreme Court has died. Charles Freeman served on the state Supreme Court from 1990 until 2018 before stepping down before the end of his last term. Freeman served before that in Cook County and then Illinois Appellate Court. In 1983, he swore in the city's first African-American mayor, Harold Washington. Freeman was replaced by Justice Scott Neville, who faces election to the post this year against five other candidates. Freeman was 86 years old. Early voting is now up and running in Chicago and throughout Cook County. There are 52 locations in the city, 52 locations throughout the rest of Cook County for early voters to go and cast their ballots. This is the first run for new touchscreen voting machines at both the city and county level that both entities combined paid more than $50 million for. They say the investment is to guard against election hacking and to make the process more user friendly. The equipment came at a price but hopefully long term, it comes at a better price. Voter ease and understanding that the voting system is fair and unbending. And election officials say there's plenty of hand sanitizer for those concerned about the spread of COVID-19. And be sure to visit our website for the 2020 voter guide to the primary election. There you'll hear from the candidates in their own words on why they think they are the best qualified for the job and where they stand on the issues. And that's all at WTTW.com slash voter guide. And Illinois U.S. Senator Tammy Duckworth has a horse in the race for president. Duckworth announces she's endorsing Joe Biden in the Democratic primary. Duckworth's endorsement comes as presidential candidates Amy Klobuchar and Pete Buttigieg have dropped out and signaled their intent to endorse Biden as well. Voters go to the polls in 14 states tomorrow, including California and Texas, for Super Tuesday. Chicago schools and government offices are closed today in observance of Kashmir Pulaski Day. The city has taken the day off since 1986 in remembrance of the Polish-American cavalry officer who fought in the Revolutionary War. And he is celebrated especially by Chicago's large Polish-American community and known as the father of the American cavalry. And we had mild weather to celebrate this Pulaski Day. Tonight clear with a low around 31 and then the mildness continues tomorrow breezy with a high near 48. And now to some of today's top business headlines. Here's Crane's Chicago business editor, Ann Dwyer. 
Paris, the impact of the coronavirus on United Airlines is growing. In the wake of a decision to pair the number of flights to Asia, the Chicago-based carrier is offering pilots who normally fly those routes the option of receiving reduced pay while not flying. United also postponed a class of 23 new pilots that it was due to start this week. United CEO Oscar Munoz says it's likely that additional schedule reductions, like the one the airline made in Asia last month, will be necessary. Until now, United has been able to absorb much of the impact of the coronavirus by moving aircraft and personnel to other routes. But the latest moves show the rapidly spreading impact of the virus into Europe, and now the U.S. is becoming more of a management challenge for the airline. Meanwhile, there's a new proposal for the site of the unbuilt Chicago Spire project. Real estate developer Related Midwest is dropping its plans for a hotel for the two-tower project at Lakeshore Drive and the Chicago River. Related Midwest is also cutting the proposed height of the project. The two residential buildings will rise 875 feet and 765 feet, respectively, down from 1,100 feet and 850 feet in the original proposal. That initial proposal was shot down by local alderman Brendan Riley. No word yet on whether the alderman will bless this latest blueprint. And finally, today marks the beginning of a new phase of the fast food breakfast wars. Wendy's this morning officially rolled out its new breakfast menu, which offers the breakfast baconator as well as a slew of other sandwiches. McDonald's isn't ceding any ground to the breakfast newcomer, however. The Chicago fast food giant declared today National Egg McMuffin Day, offering anyone with its app a free Egg McMuffin and promoting value deals. For Crane Chicago Business and ChicagoBusiness.com, I'm Ann Dwyer. Back to you, Paris. The Baconator. Thank you, Ann. A husband and wife duo are turning their dreams into reality with a design center on the city's south side. It houses appliances, artwork, and everything in between. Arts correspondent Angel Edo recently introduced us to the couple behind the design. Here's another look. When Chicago painter and sculptor Gerald Griffin got an opportunity to move his art gallery from River North to Chatham, it was a chance he couldn't refuse. People ask me, well, why would you move you know, from the River North to the south side of Chicago? And I said, why not? You know, um, we always, as a, as a collective, as a community, uh, we always feel like we have to go outside of our comfort zone to go somewhere else, somewhere else to you know, have nice things. And our idea is we should be able to have that within our own community. The Gerald Griffin Gallery now sits inside of the Bordeaux Griffin Design Center, also home to his wife Francie's showroom. This design center is a first for this neighborhood, but probably a first for the city. Probably a first period, because I don't think there's any um, designer, interior designer, who uh, has her own showroom. It features a interior design showroom for residential and commercial work. It features a 50-foot conference room, a, a banquet area, a fireplace uh, lounge area, and a 3,000-foot art gallery, which features uh, my work as well as a coterie of uh, emerging artists. It wasn't until someone noticed his artistic skill in high school that Griffin realized he could create. He says he wants to help future artists discover that same passion. There's a new component that's going to be a part of it, which is the artist's life, uh, not for profit. And it's an opportunity to be able to uh, share my experience with uh, young kids who probably never been inside an art gallery. As an architectural designer and licensed general contractor, Bordeaux Griffin says she's eager to get people excited about recreating their home. It's always been my dream to have a big design center. He can have his gallery and I can have my uh, design show. We can work at the same space mm -hmm. and still create differently. While Griffin's gallery houses paintings and sculptures he's created over the years, his artwork can also be seen paired with household accessories designed by his wife. It's this non-traditional combination the duo have created that Griffin says he hopes inspires future artists.
we're trying to bring that whole idea of understanding your intangible abilities, but also showing you that that's an entrepreneurial aspect to that too, that that's a valuable commodity, that you're valuable. For Chicago Tonight, I'm Angel Ito. The Bordeaux Griffin Design Center is open seven days a week. If you're interested in adding a piece of work featured at the center to your home, visit our website for more information. And we're back with a look at what's on tap for tomorrow, so stay with us. This evening's presentation of Chicago Tonight is made possible in part by ComEd, powering lives. We have a tremendous source of untapped efficient energy right here in our school. Let her rip, Jenny. I kind of love this idea. <laughs> the ComEd Energy Efficiency Program has real ideas for making schools energy efficient. And that is our show for this Monday night, abbreviated so we can bring you the pledge special, an intimate evening with David Foster. And don't forget to stay connected with us by signing up for our daily briefing. You can get Chicago Tonight streamed on Facebook, YouTube, and our website, wttw.com slash news. You can also get the show via podcast and the PBS video app. And please join us tomorrow night live at 7. Meet the five Republicans vying to take on long-serving Senator Dick Durbin in November. And the Chicago man featured in the national tour of Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater. Now for all of us here at Chicago Tonight, I'm Paris Schutz. Thank you for watching. Good night. Closed captioning for this program is brought to you by Robert A. Clifford and Clifford Law Offices, serving Chicago as a personal injury law firm since 1984. Hello, thank you for joining us for Chicago Tonight. I am Sky Ziskin, and I'm here with Chicago Tonight's own Brandis Friedman. Thank you so much for joining me. Happy to be here. Uh, you know, Brandis, I don't know that there's another media outlet that is able to deliver the level of credibility, in-depth coverage, trust that Chicago Tonight is able to do. I would say many of us who work here, we're very lucky to be here for that reason, because that is the, the kind of news that we get to tell here. Well, this is your go-to source for uh, anything from politics, which we've got a lot of in Chicago, to arts and culture, which again, we have a lot of in Chicago. So if you are at home and you find yourself enjoying watching Chicago tonight, I implore you, give us a call at 773-588-1111 or go to WTTW.com and uh, go ahead and, and make a contribution. It is not only helping us, but it's helping you and the community and it's giving you back what you expect to get when you're watching PBS and WTTW, which is in-depth coverage of your community. Uh, we do, of course, have wonderful thank you gifts that we can give you uh, when you do make that contribution. So I want to go ahead and do that, go over those right now, starting with this really cute baseball cap. It's a navy blue cotton cap. It's got WTTW uh, right on the front, and it's perfect for any season in Chicago, whether it's rain, sun, or uh, snow, which we get a lot of. That's at that $5 ongoing monthly contribution or a $60 single donation. If you are able to move it up to $10 as a sustainer every month or a $120 single donation, we can send out this stainless steel double walled tumbler. Now this is one of those great ones that keeps everything hot or cold for 12 hours. Mo it's modern science miracle right here on WTTW. Now, if you can go up to that $15 ongoing monthly contribution or a single donation of $180, then we would love to set you up with a Cranes Business Chicago subscription. And that is uh, both on the digital front and a print subscription. It is for one year. Uh, Brandis, talk to us a little bit about why Chicago Tonight is so important for 
uh, keeping our democracy strong? I think it's because, you know, some of it is we go beyond the sound bites, right? So on Chicago Tonight, you'll see that we have lots of guests, newsmakers, experts who are in studio, and we are able to ask them lots of questions in an eight, 10 minute segment, um, which is more than you get, as Guy said earlier. It's more than you might get on some of the other news platforms that also do a great job. But here, you know, you might be listening to a guest or a newsmaker and have a question in your head, and then one of our very knowledgeable reporters or hosts maybe it's Paris Schutz or Carol Marine, will ask the question that's in your head. That is because we have a team of folks behind the scenes, producers and editors who come together to collaborate on what the story should be, how that story should be covered, and of course, what are the questions that we want to ask when we have those folks here in studio? Sometimes the debate is uh, over uh, renaming Douglas Park, for example, or whether or not schools should have an active shooter drill. We try and give you all of the context and the nuance and a balance of ideas from a variety and a diversity of voices so that you can make your own decision. You can come to your own conclusion. We think that's especially important in an election year. And in an election year, sometimes we'll, of course, have a debate between the two candidates who are running for an office. So we hope that we're providing viewers with everything that they need to know, as much as we can give them in the time frame that we're allotted uh, to make their own decisions. And to be able to talk intelligently about it the next day, maybe with their coworkers and, and their you friends. You can win the water cooler wars. Exactly. <laughs> uh, Chicago Tonight was created for members of the community like you who value in-depth news coverage, who value getting all sides of the story and value the time and energy that goes into creating this kind of newscast. If you are sitting at home and saying, yes, that is me, I am a member of that community and you want to be a contributor as well, please pick up the phone and give us a call 773-588-1111 or go to WTTW.com. We have very friendly operators working our phones and they'll be working the phones well into the next uh, program as well. Uh, and if you do call and you're able to make a budget friendly contribution on your ha behalf, we have thank you gifts we would love to send out to you. Starting with, again, this wonderful cotton baseball hat, perfect for either baseball park you might go to this summer, uh, any baseball park really, that's at that $5 ongoing monthly contribution or a $60 single donation. If you're comfortable and you can move up to that $10 ongoing monthly contribution, we can send you this.